earlier this summer, uh, we had a group of educators that went to the business community and we asked them, what do you want a graduate of the Marion County Public School System to look like, particularly in the areas of soft skills? So we pulled together a committee made up of representatives of the CEP, of career source, governmental officials, um, people from the hospitality field, and um, um, Marion Regional Manufacturers Association. So we had a very diverse group and that group came up with a list of 23 potential soft skills. So we took that list and to, to try to narrow it down, we created a survey that went out to the business community for over a month it was there. And we, there were hundreds of responses. We had a phenomenal response. So now what we're doing is taking those five soft skills and we're embedding them into the daily lives and routines of our, of our students from elementary school, middle school, and high school. So um, for example, one of the things on the list is dependability and reliability, which includes attendance. The expectation from industry is that they have 98% attendance on the, on the job. So when we talk about attendance matters here in our school system, now we have a number that can go with attendance matters. We expect, or the business community expects 98% of our students or their employees to come to work every day. Therefore, we should expect 98% of our students to come to school every day. So what does being dependable look like in the third grade classroom or on the bus if you're a seventh grader or when you're a high school student in a CTE class, what does that look like? Um, to make this fun, our committee came up with the idea uh, of sponsoring a competition. And so thanks to Rondo Fernandez at Mojo Grill, um, the, the school that does the best job, the most creative job, the most thorough job embedding these top five skills throughout the first month of school throughout their campus will receive a catered lunch. The faculty will receive a catered lunch sponsored by Mojo Grills. The business community has always known that soft skills are important and so we're very pleased to be able to partner with the school system and of course with Rondo and Mojo's on this competition. Uh, as we're thinking about soft skills, uh, the ability to work with others, the ability to work with customers, um, the things that are required as part of school and a part of life uh, are always been important. Uh, sometimes I think that we've lost that and focus on some of the other skills. Uh, we're excited to see this emphasis back on that uh, to help our students be prepared not only for the workforce but really for being part uh, of society. Here are the top five soft skills survey that our business community would like to see in our high school graduates. Number five is teamwork, being able to participate in a team setting. Number four was having a positive attitude. Number three was having the ability to communicate both orally and in, in writing. The second most requested soft skill from our community is having a strong work ethic. So work ethic is number two. And the number one, the, the, the soft skill that received the top vote from the hundreds of, of respondents that we had to the survey was dependability and reliability. And that includes attendance and punctuality. You know, I think this idea that the school system and Rondo came up with by having a competition, instead of having someone else decide, here's how you're gonna teach soft skills, um, to allow the people who are doing it every day to focus on that, to come up with their best ideas. Uh, and the idea of making a competition is we're learning from ourselves, uh, from the teachers in the classroom, um, the best way to teach these skills. And so I think that's the most exciting part of all of this. The competition ends September 8th. We will announce the winner and bring you video of their culinary reward in a future episode of K-12 Connect. iReady is an online program. It's an instructional tool to be used um, by teachers and administration at a school. It starts with a universal screener that each student takes, one for reading and one for math. Um, and it's an adaptive screener that goes up and down. It asks questions increasingly harder till the student gets them wrong. Um, and then it kind of goes up and down. To, it adapts to the, the skill level of the student to find their performance level. Um, it shows their areas of strengths and weakness both in the math and the reading. So reading looks at phonological awareness, phonics, um, 
high frequency words, comprehension for literature and information, while math looks at the number and operations. It looks at, at major domains, algebra and algebraic thinking, measurement and data. And so from there, each student gets an individual report with placement levels in each of those domains so that the teacher can then look at that and can group students according to profiles um, and can, then can also look at what each individual student needs. This year the district purchased uh, the assessment piece the universal screener for all schools in the county. And so right now we're in our first AP1 window, which is assessment period one. Um, and so students are taking the math and the reading universal screener, and we're getting results back to see their overall placement. Um, some school, schools additionally purchased online instruction, where after the universal screener, students receive a, an online pathway of lessons that are prescribed exactly for what they need. Um, and other schools purchased in addition to the online instruction, they also purchased print materials that go with iReady uh, workbooks in both math and reading. iReady has been in the district. This is the third year for iReady. It was used at the extended learning schools for the past two years. Um, and so one school that has had a lot of success with iReady is uh, Bellevue Santos. Um, Brian Green and his staff were able to take the knowledge that they learned from the program and then institute that in the classrooms and again using iReady as an instructional tool to give the teacher the information they need to design an instruction for each of those students. It is only as valuable as you make it. If we, if we utilize the program, if our teachers utilize the program for nothing more than to put them on a computer and leave them be, we're not going to get much out of it. However, the strength of the program comes in identifying those needs like I discussed. It comes in pulling the resources that are going to help meet that student's needs to mastery. It comes from the ability to individualize a program of study for that individual student despite if they have weaknesses or strengths. And it also comes with our ability to monitor their progress towards standards-based instruction, towards mastery of the standards along the way. And so we put into it the entire uh, focus of all of our efforts to improve upon our instruction utilizing the tools and also in identifying students and what their needs are. While it is people, not programs, make a difference, how people utilize those programs can make a huge difference. And iReady is one of those programs that we utilize properly that helps to make a big difference here at Bellevue Santos. Marion County Public Schools continues to monitor the latest updates on Hurricane Irma. If we decide to change school schedules, we will do so based on student safety as the top priority. We will use our Skylert messaging system, district and school websites, and Twitter accounts to share that information as soon as possible. We are also confirming inventory of our food service operations and custodial services at each of our 14 schools that can serve as impact or host shelters. Finally, we're encouraging our employees and school families to be fully prepared at home for what course this storm may take. As of noon Tuesday, the only changes to announce are that all Marion County home football games scheduled for Friday night have been moved to Thursday. Bellevue and Forest are scheduled to play road games and are currently discussing the options with their opponents. This summer, Marion Oaks Elementary got a complete computer refresh. All the teacher, administrators, all got replaced one for one, one desktop for one desktop. All the student computers are getting pulled out and they'll all be replaced with Chromebooks. That was five student computers per classroom beforehand. Now there'll be carts stationed in wings. Rather than being able to service five students in each classroom, we have Chromebooks that'll be carted up into carts of 30 where they can service an entire classroom or service an entire wing. Um, not to mention the fact we pull student desktops out, we're getting more Chromebooks in uh, than we did take out desktops. The district technology department used any and everybody it could find, including the team that produces this show, to get the changeover done in time for school to start. Right now they're, they're doing first stage of a uh, four stage process. One, they're scanning in the MAC addresses and service tags for wireless purposes. Um, they're unboxing the devices. Once they're done unboxing the process, uh, un unboxing devices, they'll take them back and we'll image them. Uh, once we're done imaging them, the last step of the process is they will get carded. When, when all the desktops were taken away, it was a bit of a shock. But now that we have the carts, it's a lot easier because we don't have 
just five computers for the kids to use. Each kid has a Chromebook. So each kid is responsible for their, for their Chromebook. And we use these from as soon as the kids walk in to as soon as they leave out. So we have a procedure to where when something is posted online that they know that as soon as they come in, they put their stuff down, they gather their materials, they get their Chromebook, and they get started on working. So we're using this all the time, every day, first thing in the morning. Can that be a sentence on its own? Is that the main clause? Yes. I did the computer lab thing before and it ended up being kind of a little bit of a hassle too because we have to stop everything, get the kids to line up and depending on where you are, you have to walk over to the computer lab Then it takes about the kids about five minutes to settle down and then have to log back in. But with the Chromebooks, they all have their own and it's in the classroom so we don't have to go anywhere. Almost everything is here. These Chromebooks are extremely versatile. Um, the desktops did have some limitations, but I like the way I have the Chromebook. And with these Chromebooks now, they're touchscreen too, so the kids, that's something that they're used to with phones and tablets, so this is something second nature to them. They learn really quick. Uh, you'd be surprised on how quick these kids can pick things up on the, on the electronics in the Chromebooks. I teach the kids to make sure that we're in a safe place, that we're not going to be stepped on, but um, I I'm okay with letting the kids sitting down over there or laying down on the floor as long as it's in a safe place and they know that as long as they're doing that they're, and they're working, I'm okay with it. That's the biggest thing. I want to make sure that the kids are comfortable because if you're not comfortable, if you're not willing to do something, you're just, you're not going to want to do it. You know, they need to be comfortable and if they're comfortable, they're more productive. And then we are able to figure out what they can do and um, easier differentiation from there.